guys, Katie here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing my annual What I Learned This Year video and I'm hoping it won't be too long. I wrote everything out on my phone, but I love to talk. You guys know me and this year did teach me a lot. I've been doing these recap videos for like eight years now and it's so nice to have these to watch just for myself to like go look back on what I learned that year, what happened in my life that year. Not that I can't remember it, but honestly sometimes my memory does fail me so it's nice just to kind of um have these as a digital diary for myself in a way but i hope that you guys enjoy watching them too anyways this year was kind of another rough one for me personally there were some things that happened that were really sad and horrible and of course the pandemic is still going strong which is disappointing but i do want to focus on the positive as much as i can so i'm going to go through month by month what happened in my life and then at the end i'll tell you guys what this year taught me So January 2021 was kind of a rocky one, honestly, for me personally. Um, I was struggling a little bit. We had just moved into this new home and I just really felt like I, I couldn't settle in because I was always going back and forth between Levi's home, his apartment, and then um, here. So like I decided to just take a break from going to Levi's apartment for a whole month and I didn't go there for the entire month of January essentially and it was a really nice kind of self-care month for me. I um, focused on myself a lot and then towards the end of that month unfortunately my friend Katie, her mom passed away of COVID and so that was like a big um, kind of awakening for me personally just to continue to take the pandemic seriously and then also was the first of many losses that um, I witnessed my friends go through this year. But yeah, overall it was just a reminder too um, that I need to take care of my parents. I live here with them. I need to protect them from this virus and it's very real and it was really scary and really sad. Um, but Katie is a newer friend of mine. I'm really thankful she came into my life last year and I've gotten closer with her throughout this year. So shout out to you, Katie. And yes, her name is Katie. There are like three other Katies in my life. It's great. So yeah, overall, not really anything positive happened in January for me. Uh, the insurrection was on January 6th. That was like a crazy memory I'll have forever. I know exactly where I was whenever I heard about the Capitol being, you know, attacked essentially. Crazy day for Americans, that was. I will say one of the most positive things in January um, was when I took those few weeks for myself here to settle into this new home. I actually um, started watching Vampire Diaries for the first time. I had never watched it in high school and it became my favorite show for the entire year. Um, I kind of stopped watching it after a few months but then I picked it back up again recently and finished it and I'm so happy I did. So yeah, Vampire Diaries was like my defining show of 2021. I think in a way it let me escape and pretend that it was 2011 again. But circling back to the fact that my friend Katie's mom passed away, I want to say that if any of you guys have lost a loved one to this virus um, in the past two years that it's been around, I just want to say my heart is with you. And um, I'm hoping that 2022 will be better when it comes to the, the pandemic. February. I'm sorry it took so long to talk about January, but there was like a lot to unpack there. February was a little bit of a better month. I went back to Levi's apartment more often and I felt like I started to really enjoy living at home and kind of made my new room my own space here so I was able to um, have a good balance. February is always a really busy month for me because I have so many people in my life who have birthdays in February so my sister is born in February and then like literally 10 other people in my life so it's always a very busy month full of celebrating my friends and their birthdays. In February I also had two opportunities to do some modeling for um, friends of mine who are or were getting into the photography field at the time so one was for my friend Shaney I used to work with her at my old job and she um, just moved to LA earlier this year so right before she moved away she did a photo shoot of me in her home and it was really a fun experience and then just a, like a week or two later I got to do a photo shoot and my friend Dante photographed me so I got to do two different modeling fun little projects in February. At the end of February, it almost felt similar to January because another one of my friends actually lost their parent. In this case, it was his father. I got to go to um, his father's funeral and see his family that I had not seen since high school. So it was definitely a bittersweet occasion. Um, and yeah, what a way to end another month, honestly, but it was, um, I'm thankful that I went to that funeral. March, 2021. Not much happened in March except for the highlight of that month was that I got to go to Kentucky with my friend Brandon and a few other girls. It was like a fun little weekend getaway, really spontaneous and honestly really like rewarding and just relaxing. Okay, 
now April and there's a lot to kind of talk about in April. It's my birthday month for one. Um, I turned 26 this past year. But on April 8th, things did start off on a positive note for the month and I got the COVID vaccine. Um, I got the Johnson & Johnson vaccine and I vlogged my experience and it was definitely like a really big deal for me to get that and go by myself because I have such a like severe needle phobia and I pass out and stuff but I went by myself to Walgreens got it done and um, I'm really happy that I did and I even have my booster scheduled for next Friday so wish me luck last year around the time of my birthday my friend Ellen passed away she died in a car accident and um, so this year I was kind of preparing for that one year anniversary of her death and I was going to you know kind of have a little get together with my friend Casey and uh, go to our high school we put sunflowers down on like the front lawn of our high school every year it's gonna be our new tradition for Ellen and we did do that but unfortunately um, just a few days before the one year anniversary of Ellen's death my friend uh, Alex passed away and it was really sudden and very out of the blue and super super horrible and traumatic for my friends who had to go through um, the whole situation, basically my friend Sydney was dating Alex and then Casey and her friend group were all really good friends with him as well. That happened on April 10th. I could probably go on and on about how strong my friends are and have been, um, especially my friends Casey and Sydney and Alex's family. It's just honestly so inspiring to see how strong they have been. Uh, but if this loss taught me anything, it is that there's a lot to learn about how people grieve and how people cope and uh, most of all it's taught me how to be there for my friends when they are going through these types of situations and I mean Casey my friend has lost a lot of people in her life and she can't seem to catch a break and so I think for me it has allowed me to see that my role in her life is hopefully someone who's supportive and can be there for her uh, since I personally haven't lost anyone as traumatically as other people in my life have and it just scares me but it also allows me to remind myself that life is fleeting and I need to not take anyone for granted it's just another reminder of that very cliche term of like do not take your life for granted and do not take the lives of the people you love for granted I ended April by going to a wedding it was the first of the many weddings that I went to this year don't worry we were all safe and um, thankfully by April a lot of people in my life were already vaccinated as well in May, my sister got to attend her senior prom, which was like a pretty big deal because we didn't know if she was going to get to have a prom, and she did, and she looked beautiful, and she got to go with her boyfriend, so very happy for her. I got to go to a bridal shower for my friend Lauren in May, and that was a big deal because I had never been to a bridal shower before. This was like the year of weddings, honestly. Like, it, it really was. I don't know. I Like, looking back, I when I added it all up, I definitely went to quite a few. Probably like seven total, I think. May was a pretty fun month because I got to go to a Cardinals game. I had not been to one in two years, and this was with Marlon's man and Levi's sister Patience, so I was really excited for it, and it was great. Around May 28th, we went to my grandparents' lake house um, for Memorial Day weekend, which was a nice little getaway, and it would be one of quite a few other trips to Lake House that I took this year. I think I went there more this year than like any other year. June, June, June. June was a good month. I like June. Usually it's like my favorite month of the summer. It's always just like warm and the pool is open and I get to go on trips, which is what happened in June of 2021. On June 3rd, my sister graduated high school, and that was a really cool experience. It was an outdoor um, graduation ceremony. The weather was great, and it was really cool to see that. And in June, I got to film my friend Lauren's wedding. She actually chose me as her videographer, and I didn't know if I was going to do a good job, and I'm actually very proud of myself. It turned out great. Her wedding video was cute, and it was such a cool experience being able to, like, know that I'm capable of creating a wedding video. I mean, it wasn't, like... It was a professional quality but it was it was fun and it was a really good wedding too but the highlight of June was when I took a spontaneous trip to Anna Marie Island Florida with my sister and her friends it was just like a spur-of-the-moment decision that I made basically two weeks before they were gonna leave because they already had the trip planned and then I thought to myself one day I was like Christy what if I what if I go with you and she's like that would be great so we got an Airbnb down in Anna Maria it was a 16 hour drive I don't think I'll ever do that again it was way too long of a drive but we made it down there safely had a whole week down there to relax on the beach and it was great the drive was definitely worth it I'll give you that like the beaches were beautiful and the Anna Maria Island was awesome but I just think next time I might 
take a shorter trip to Florida, like Dustin or something. Then came 4th of July weekend at my grandparents' lake house in Illinois. Um, we spent 4th of July there last year as well. It's in a tiny little town and it's a good little getaway and uh, it was very fun. The rest of July was just spent getting obsessed with WWE um, Royal Rumbles. I developed this weird obsession with The Undertaker from the WWE realm this past year so that was one of my weird little quirky obsessions and still am kind of obsessed but yeah we watched Royal Rumbles a lot we went to the pool and I worked and uh, it was a really good nice summer month. August marks the one year anniversary of when I started my podcast called My Zillennial Life. I started it last year in 2020 and I ended it in May of 2021 thinking I was going to start it back up in August of this year, but unfortunately I just didn't have the motivation to. So maybe at some point I will start that podcast back up again. It was a really fun experience though while it lasted. August was another good month. I got to go to the lake house again and go to a really fun carnival they have every year there, and I had not gotten to go to that carnival since I was like six. So I just decided to go. I have a remote position for my job and so I really like one of my goals for next year is to take advantage of the fact that I'm a remote worker and go on more trips and just work from other places because I'm capable of doing it. I just have to go. That weekend that I went to my grandparents like house uh, for the carnival I drove straight from there in Illinois to a tiny place in Missouri like three hours away to attend my friend Stephanie's bachelorette party. And it was at a little lake house. I went from one lake house to another. We actually swam in the lake at this lake house and had a great weekend. I had never been to a bachelorette party before and just moving on to the next thing. I have never been a bridesmaid before and I um, got to be a bridesmaid in Stephanie's wedding, which was at the end of August. And it was one year since I filmed her and Dave's proposal. So just to be able to like come full circle and be in their wedding and watch them get married was really special. A week before I went to Stephanie's wedding, I did go to a different wedding. It was for a couple I didn't know. I just went there with my friend Brandon. It was fun. I like dressing up and like being able to pick out outfits for weddings. So I think that's why I just said yes to so many this year. But yeah, it was my first time being a bridesmaid and I just want to thank Stephanie and Dave, if you're watching, for letting me be in your amazing wedding. It was an awesome experience. September. Wake me up when September ends. Summer weather seemed to last a little bit longer this year, probably because of global warming. Um, so September was unusually hot, like it usually starts to get cooler and feels like fall in September. Not this year. Yeah, so I spent like more time at the pool in September than I have any other year. Got to go to another Cardinals game, this time I went with Levi. I took a trip to Kansas City in September as well and had a fun little weekend getaway with my friend Carlin and I got to see an old friend, um, her name's Michaela, and so just seeing her, talking to her parents was just an awesome part of that month. Also in September I went to my friend Katie's mom's memorial service because um, her mother had never had like a funeral or anything when she passed away um, in January of COVID and so we finally got to have like a celebration of life party for her. It was really fun. It was a Christmas themed get together. Very, very cool. On September 21st, I made another impulsive decision. There were a few of those this year when it comes to like saying yes to things. That was one of my New Year's resolutions is to say yes more. And I think I did that, you know, I went to Anna Marie Island. I said yes to filming my friend's wedding. And I said yes on September 21st to going to the Group Love concert in St. Louis. I know it's not a big deal, it's just a concert, but it was my first concert back after a whole year, you know, not going to concerts. And I love concerts. So Group Love, one of my favorite bands, literally one of the best concerts I've ever been to. It was my second time seeing them and it was so fun. At the end of September, I got to go to yet again another wedding and this was like one of the best ones of the year because it was a family wedding. It was my cousin Ryan's wedding in Indianapolis and my whole family except for Christy, my little sister, um, went. We drove, we stayed in a hotel, we got to see like family members that I had not seen in like seven plus years, some of them. And then my Nana, who I hadn't seen since 2019 was there. She danced, like literally danced on the dance floor. It was amazing, a core memory. I'll remember that forever. And it was a really special weekend. And so yeah, that was the end of September. In October, my Nana, the one I just spoke of, uh, turned 90 years old and unfortunately did not get to go to her birthday in Houston. Um, but I just wanted to kind of give a shout out to my Nana because she's awesome. 
I also got to go to my first ever concert with Levi. I've been dating Levi for almost five years now and I don't think we've ever been to a concert together. So we went to Nathaniel Ratliff and the Night Sweats in October and um, I think he really enjoyed it. They're one of my favorite bands and uh, definitely was a good concert. I once again headed to my grandparents' lake house towards the end of October for a little Halloween weekend uh, at the lake house with my cousins. I dressed up as Momo. I wore like a scary mask and I dressed up as like a tennis player with a scary mask on. I don't know. It was a really fun weekend with my cousins. I think these these memories that I have made at the lake house this year are really really gonna like last me for years to come because there's gonna be a time when we won't be able to come together. Uh, my cousins are growing up. They're going away to college. You know it's just not gonna be the same. So I'm really happy that I did go to uh, the lake house so many times this year. Now for Halloween, I am just going to mention the things I was. We went to a little get together with my friend Gus's. I was a space girl and then I was Jenna from 13 girl going on 30. I mainly just wore the dress and took a picture for Instagram. And uh, what else? Yeah, so I was three things this year. Jenna from 13 going on 30, Momo, the scary mask, and um, the space girl, which was a really cute costume. I liked that costume a lot. Now let's move on to November. We're reaching the end of this video. I know it's been long. I'm so sorry. November was a month that I was looking forward to a lot this year because it was the month I got to go see my favorite band perform live for the third time ever, The Bleachers. Um, they came to a venue close to my parents' house and I took my sister so she got to go see them for the first time and it was such a amazing concert. They always put on a great show. If you've never listened to The Bleachers before, I'd recommend it. And just a week after I went to that concert, Taylor Swift released um, Taylor's version, Red, and that was like the highlight of that month as well. Um, I'm a big Taylor Swift fan, guys. I love her. Another big thing that happened in November, or I probably should say a small thing, is that I got two pet spiders. Um, you're probably going to think I'm insane when I say this, but essentially the past two years I've been obsessed with the idea of getting like a pet of some sort that a lot of people probably don't have, like a reptile, a snake of some sort or a gecko has been on my list of pets I've wanted for a while and I didn't get either of those two pets this year but I did um, discover that jumping spiders, regal jumping spiders, make really easy and cute pets in my opinion. So I ordered one female regal jumping spider off of uh, a website and I got sent the spider in the mail and I have it. Um, they're right here. I don't know if you could see. I'll just turn the camera. They're in these little um, enclosures. So I have a female jumping spider and a male jumping spider. The female's name is Frankie and the male's name is Boo and now that I have these like I can't see myself ever not having a pet spider. They're so easy to take care of. They're really cute to just watch. It's kind of like having a fish like you can also technically handle them but I have not handled either of these two. I think it's more fun just to watch them plus they're both absolutely terrified of me so Anyways, yeah, November I got spiders. Kind of an odd update, but it's the truth. So towards the end of November, obviously we have Thanksgiving. It was going to be the first Thanksgiving for us in this home, but we actually ended up doing it um, at the lake house. So yeah, once again, another weekend at the lake house. And I actually took a whole week off work for Thanksgiving this year, which I'm very thankful for. And I got to spend lots of time with family at my grandparents' lake house with my cousins. It was a lovely time. And then a week before that, I went to a Friendsgiving at my um, friend Gabby's house in Kansas City. After a whole year like of not really being able to see anyone, um, this was definitely a year of like making up for all that lost time in the safest way we possibly could. Like I said, a majority of my friends are vaccinated and um, so yeah, and I did not have any issues going to any events this year because a majority of them required vaccinations. Moving on to December, um, I got my hair done a few times this year. I just thought I'd mention that I still have bangs, if you can't tell. I only say that because I watched my video from last year and I was like, I got bangs this year. I think they're gonna be around for a while. And they are, like they're still here. During this past month, we went over to my grandpa's house a lot. Uh, we helped him decorate his home for Christmas, which has become a new tradition ever since my grandma passed away. And I'm really thankful for those memories. And also my grandma has a lot of really cool Christmas decorations. So getting to do that again this year was just a, a great memory. I've gotten to see a lot of beautiful Christmas lights and just in general do like fun Christmas activities. I went to the Botanical Gardens Christmas lights. I went to Tellus Park last week with my family and um, it's felt more like Christmas this year, oddly enough, than other years for me personally. Uh, I know a lot of people are saying it doesn't feel like Christmas or it didn't. 
but I think for me it's just because it's like what you do and what you if you start celebrating early too that kind of helps like I put up this little mini Christmas tree in my room back here in November and I never decorate that early so I think that helped me get into the Christmas spirit a little bit more and it was our first Christmas in this home it was really really a great one you can watch my vlogmas episode um, from last week if you want to see what my Christmas week was all about but as usual December has completely flown by along with 2021 in general um, I'm thankful for this year and um, everything that it taught me and I'm gonna go into that now real quickly don't take anyone you love for granted and make sure you tell everyone you love them like before you say goodbye it's just like a simple thing that we don't think about all the time but I promise you guys like saying I love you to the people that you love more often is something you'll never regret even your friends like normalize saying I love you to your friends more often okay if 21 taught me anything it's that it's okay to cancel plans and to get yourself some friends who are okay with you when you cancel plans for like mental health reasons or whatever my friend group we're all really good at communicating um when we want to hang out and then if like the day comes and we're not in the mood to everyone's so okay if someone cancels or if everyone cancels like it's really not a big deal and i've always been super super thankful to have friends who are so understanding another thing i learned is that i'm stronger than i think i am um and i'm capable of more than i think i am especially like in my career this year i've grown a lot and i'm so so thankful for my job like that is one thing that's remained constant the past two years of my life that i could not be more happy to be working for such an amazing company and i'm literally working my dream job so I need to like not give into imposter syndrome as much and realize that I'm stronger and capable of a lot. The next lesson is that working out doesn't have to be hard. Uh, I do have a goal for 2022 that's pretty generic and cliche and that is to get 30 minutes of physical activity a day Monday through Friday and I discovered just in the past few months that I really like um, to just kind of go easy on myself when it comes to working out and I found a workout that I enjoy and that's 30 minutes on the peloton we do have a peloton and i'll just watch youtube videos instead of like doing a peloton class and it just helps it go by quicker for me and also i like the 12 3 12 3 30 workout it's um, a treadmill workout so i discovered that this year and i'm really excited to get more into that um, as i head into the new year just in general to become more active because i am not someone who's ever been super active at all there is beauty in the things we fear, and this is a lesson that was taught to me by getting pet spiders, believe it or not. Um, a lot of people think I'm crazy for having spiders, but these ones are cute and they're special, okay? I'll probably insert photos and stuff, but yeah, I mean, there is beauty in the things we fear. Uh, for example, I fear getting anything with needles, I fear the doctor, but there's beauty in it because in this case, I faced my fears this year and I was able to get something that was really important to me done so that I could protect the people that I love. The last lesson I have written down here is that I need to go more easy on myself and this goes along with imposter syndrome, but just in general, I need to be nicer to myself. Um, body image has become more of a relevant thing in my life this year. I am 26, my body is changing and that's okay. And I'm kind of like learning to love it and treat it better and talk to it more nicely that's definitely a goal for next year what are my 2022 new year's resolutions i'm gonna give more compliments this year i'm gonna try to give one compliment a day i'm gonna say one nice thing about myself every day so i'm gonna compliment myself and compliment someone else every day like i said earlier trying to get 30 minutes of whatever exercise i can every day whether that's going on a walk or using the peloton i love my job don't get me wrong but this next new year's resolution is to take more time away from work and kind of what i mean by that is just to have more of a work-life balance um i do full full-time social media for my job like I'm constantly on Facebook and Instagram every day so when I'm not at work um, and I'm on it more for just personal reasons it just becomes like a lot so my goal is to take more time off of um, social media this year the very last thing that I want to work on in 2022 is my communication skills and communicating what I need being honest with people um, and not being so afraid to like hurt people's feelings and protect them when it's really like me who is suffering like i just need to be more open and honest and communicate more directly and not always be trying to avoid conflict like i i am someone who does not like to um i guess stand up for myself and i i don't know if like my food's wrong at a restaurant i'm the kind of person who's like afraid to say anything about it so that kind of stuff just to be more assertive is my goal for 2022 but i do hope that one year from now when i film this video again i have been able to achieve all my goals or at least work on them a little bit more 
and I hope I become a better Katie with every year that goes by. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I'm sorry, like, I'm just kind of all over the place. Um, I can't believe this is, like, the first time I've ever sat down in front of the camera at my new place, but been here for a whole year. Really love this home. Love what I've made it into. Love my family. Love my friends. And with everything I've been through this year, I have to honestly say I love 2021 at least a little bit more than 2020 for the most part. Every year is full of new lessons and that's why I film these. So I hope you guys all enjoyed watching and I will see you, literally I'll see you next year. Bye.